How does that hit you, Kate? <laughs> well, it all depends on how you handle the details. <laughs> Today, Kate Bradley, owner of the Shady Rest Hotel and one of the leading citizens of our valley, celebrates her something birthday. You ain't just smudged out. That's the way it is in all the copies. Smudged out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's wonderful to have an editor for a friend. <laughs> Sit down over here, Mom. Well, what, what's this all about? Never you mind. You just sit down. Breakfast's on. Breakfast? Mm -hmm. And that's the way it's going to be all day. You're not going to have to do one thing. Oh, but honey, I plan to wash the kitchen floor and wash the lobby windows. And Now, don't worry, Mom. We can do all that. Sure we can. Can't we, Uncle Joe? Sure you can. <laughs> Hi. And happy birthday. Oh, would you look at that. <laughs> she was this rough. <laughs> to my darling mom from Billy <laughs> Oh. Oh, that's lovely. But you shouldn't have. It's far too expensive. Well, don't be silly, Mom. Besides, how do you know how much it costs? Well, I can tell because I can't even pronounce it. <laughs> mm. But I'll bet the English translation is... <laughs> <laughs> oh, who's that from? Is that you? <laughs> oh, my love, Bobby Chip. Um, it's... Oh, honey, thank you. That's... That's wonderful. It, it, it's just what I needed. What is it? Um, and you knitted it yourself. I hope you like it. What is it? Uncle Joe, for goodness sakes, anybody can see that it's a... a knitted slingshot. Mom. Uh, uh, hold it for pliers? I guess I better tell you, because it's really not quite finished. Oh? It's a pair of gloves. Oh. Thumb and the forefinger. Oh, well, honey, that, that's very nice. That'll keep my fingers warm for. for bowling. I'll finish them honest, Mom. I just wanted to give you something. Oh, honey, it's the sentiment that counts. Hey, Kate, look at that last one. <laughs> well, what do you know? A new dinner gong. Yeah, when the old one rusted, you couldn't hardly hear it. I almost missed dinner the other night. So what kind of a present is that? It's practical. And it's the sentiment that counts. Oh, what's sentimental about a dinner gong? To him, everything. I guess you're right, Kate. Oh, here you go. Well, what in the world is... My old grocery orders. Uh, read the card. To Kate from Sam. I don't know, the other side. Paid in full. Well, Sam. <laughs> what does this mean? Well, it means that the Shady Rest and Sam Drucker store are all even. The account's all paid up. But, Sam, I've had an account with you for 20 years. At uh, 25, but who counts? <laughs> anyway, we're all even. Sam, you can't do that. I'll say not. What a sneaky way to avoid handing out free cigars. What do you mean? Every month when you send me down with something to pay on the county, he gives me a free stogie. You sure kicked that in the head. What's the matter with you, Joe? <laughs> yes, Uncle Joe, for heaven's sakes. If it'll make you any happier, I'll start getting in debt right away. Well, anyway, Mom, happy birthday. Yes, and thank you all. But, uh, I, I just wonder, um... What is it, Mom? Well, uh, I, I don't want to seem greedy, but I just wondered if there was one more remembrance from one more person. Hey, Betty Jo didn't send a present. Joe, do you have to be so blunt? Well, she didn't, did she? Well, there's still time. Today's mail hasn't come. That's right, it hasn't. 
Well, Betty Jo wouldn't forget me even on her honeymoon. Of course she wouldn't. Not in a million years. We'll soon find out. There's a cannonball. I'll run down and see what Floyd's got for you, Kate. No, no, no. I'll, I'll go. I just, I just couldn't stand to wait. She sure seems excited. You don't suppose the kids could have forgot. Oh, not them two. They probably sent her one of them carved out coconut shells. Or maybe one of them beaded pillows with a hooli girl on it. You know, the tassel forms the grass curtain and you shake it. Oh, yeah. And here's your copy of the Farmer's Almanac. And here's your copy of the coming attractions at the Pixley Bijou. Another goodie. They're bringing back the Ken Maynard Festival. <laughs> and here's a couple of postcards marked occupant. That's all the mail, huh? Yeah, that's always in the sack. I see. Well, thanks anyway, Floyd. Sure, sorry, Kate. You're welcome to my mail. <laughs> but all I got is a free sample tube of shaving cream. <laughs> Wait a minute. I darn near forgot. Oh, I knew it. I knew they wouldn't forget. <laughs> Who? Betty Joe and Steve. Oh, this has come all the way from Hawaii. And I know that it's it's gonna be something appropriate, like a like a hand painted picture of old faithful. That's for me, Kate. Oh, oh, that's that's beautiful. Gee, I hope I made the right choice. I could have got you a napkin ring with the skyline of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. <laughs> I know that must have been a tough decision to make, but uh, I love this, and thank you very much, Floyd. Oh, it's nothing. Um, Pray so. I see. Gee, you mean you haven't heard a word from Betty Jo on your birthday? No, I haven't. That sure isn't like Betty Jo. No, it isn't. Maybe something horrible happened to her, and... Floyd! <laughs> We're just trying to help. <laughs> Of course you would. Have a wonderful flight. Oh, I just hate to leave Hawaii, don't you? I've got some pretty pleasant memories, all right. May I help you? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Mr. and Mrs. Elliot, thank you. Mr. and Mrs. Stephen Elliot, flight 203 to San Francisco. Please confirm. You don't mind rushing back for my mother's birthday? Of course not. Have you got her present? No, I thought you had it. I didn't have it. D didn't you put it in your suitcase? I, I don't think so. The taxi. Well, maybe we left it in the taxi. Oh, I hope not. Well, darling, run. Maybe you can catch the one we have. Well, if it's lost, sweetheart, we can buy another one. Well, not on the mainland. You can't buy a, a mumu on the mainland like you can here, can you? I, I don't know. I, I don't buy too many mumus. <laughs> See? Well, darling, now hurry up, please. I'll take care of things here. Isn't he sweet? We're on our honeymoon, and we still haven't had our first fight. That's nice. He didn't even complain when I spent a whole afternoon shopping for my mother's birthday present. Imagine. <laughs> oh, I hope she likes it. I hope it didn't get wrinkled. Wrinkled? Maybe I did leave it in my suitcase. Uh, sir, do you mind if I have a look at that? Uh, sir? Uh, sir? <laughs> Excuse me, what happened to my wife? <laughs> What's she doing in there? I'll let her explain. <laughs> Oh, hi, darling. I found this. I, I better get this pack. I'll, I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it. Oh, wait a minute. I want to pack this to 
again. Darling, let's let the man run his airline. <laughs> From this valley they say you are going We will miss your bright eyes and sweet smile For they say you are taking the sunshine That has brightened our pathway a while What do you think? What do you think? Well... Me too. We sure do miss Betty Jo. And there's only two of you. It's hard to be a trio. <laughs> Where's the birthday girl? Hi. Hi. Mom, guess who's here? Don't tell me, don't tell me. It's Betty. Ah. Uh, <laughs> Joe McLeod. Oh, hello, Kate. How does it feel to be another year older? Ah, oh, dear Selma, you always remember my birthdays, don't you? Always. Every last one of them. <laughs> oh, this is for you. Well, thank you. Oh, it's just a little something for your charm bracelet. Charm? I wonder what it is. It's got to be something meaningful in Mom's life. Oh, it is. A Thomas Edison's first light bulb. <laughs> oh, nice. As you can see, it's very authentic. Oh, I'm sure it is. Since he probably gave it to you personally. <laughs> Kate, that was way before my time. <laughs> oh, really? Quick, what do you do when the lamp's too bright? You trim the wick. I mean, that was dirty, Kate. Oh, Kate, Kramer just went off in the kitchen. Oh, I got a couple of pies in the oven. Girls, will you take care of them? Sure, sure Mom. Bye, Mrs. Bye. Lapp. Hello, Joe. Well, I see you two are having another nice little get-together. Who's winning? Oh, um, Selma brought me a present. No kidding. Did it go off yet? <laughs> oh, that's the thanks I get for thinking that somebody ought to remember her. Oh, yeah? For your information, Kate got presents from everybody. Me, Sam, Floyd, Billy Joe, Bobby Joe. Everybody remembered Kate. Thank you, Uncle Joe. Oh, uh, what did the honeymooners send you from the island? Well, I haven't heard from them yet. How quickly they forget. They didn't forget. There's just a delay. Yeah, in case you don't know it, Selma, the Hawaiian Islands is hundreds of miles away. <laughs> well, I suppose you think the only form of communication is by clipper ship? <laughs> no, Kate, dear, you'd have heard by now. I just forget. All except my dear Henrietta. Do you know on her trip to Cleveland, she wrote me every single day. You still didn't send her money to come home. <laughs> Joe Carson. Hi, Sam. What do you think you're doing? This is federal property. Looking for my property. Or rather, Kate. What do you mean? Meaning I'm staying here until I find the package, letter, or what from Betty, Joe, and Steve. I'm convinced those kids wouldn't forget Kate's birthday. Well, I'm convinced they wouldn't either, but it's not here. Well, I figure there's a goof up in the mail system, and it's got to be right here in your substation. What do you mean it's got to be in my substation? I run an efficient post office. Then how come there's an avocado in cubbyhole A? Well, where else would you file an avocado under Z? A post office, not a vegetable stand. I put it there because when it's on the vegetable stand, my customers keep squeezing it. And at 40 cents a piece, I can't afford to have them bruised. Oh, brother. And the same goes for that fancy tomato you'll find there under T. Are you going to get out of my post office, or do I have to slap a wanted sign on you and put your picture on my bullet board? Oh, hold it, Sam. So you're running a fishing post office, huh? Oh, well, that uh, must have... This is Kate's letter. Holy smokes, addressed to me. Well, that's a relief. What? Well, that can't be anything important. I don't know. This letter might be the most important thing in my life. Like what? Well, my draft notice. <laughs> All right, maybe an important communication from a broker. Joe, it says right there on the return address, Pixley Department Store. Hey, I won. Guess the right number of jelly beans. <laughs> Sam, if the time's expired on this, you're coming into court. <laughs> Dear sir, unless we get immediate action on your past due bill, it's the wrong Joe Carson. How 
can that be? You're the only one. I know when I'm the right, Joe Carson. When you forget about that, the point is, we know these kids wouldn't forget Kate and there's a birthday package around somewhere. Herman Halper. Huh? That new postmaster up in Pitchley. He's a hang-up. He's been sore at us ever since we got a higher zip code. What can he do? Plenty. Since we're just a lowly substation, everything has to come through him. You don't think he'd hold up Kate's birthday package? Well, it's happened before. He held up a care package because he said it was a bomb threat. Was it? No. Floyd Smoot sent off one of his old suits and they left his railroad watch in the pocket. <laughs> so, I think I'll lock up early. You and I'll go pay the high and mighty Mr. Halpern a visit. <laughs> Yeah, it saves a lot of worry. Steve, if you like, I'll take Mom's present. I don't have your Mom's present. You don't have it? Well, I thought I gave it to you when we were boarding. Well, you did, but then once we got on the plane, you took it from me. Oh, no. <laughs> Sir, you'll have to hold up your flight. I forgot my mother's mobo. <laughs> You know, uh, Moo Moo. Flight 152, now boarding at gate three. Last call for flight 152. Look, she's out looking for a red cap. She'll be right here, I guarantee it. Just a minute. I got it. I got it. Now, don't get excited, Kate, but Sam and Joe are in the Pixley Jail. <laughs> jail? What for? What did they do? Tampered with the U.S. mate. What? Yeah, they got into a big thing with Mr. Halper, the Pixley Postmaster. <laughs> Billy Joe, honey, get my coat, would you, dear, and my purse? That's pretty serious, tampering with the U.S. mail. Yeah, somewhat worse than an overdue library book. <laughs> Wouldn't that be something if Sam got his picture posted on his own bulletin board? Yeah, yeah, something. Let's go. Huh? Good luck, Ma. Happy birthday. <laughs> It's you. I understand you got a couple of new boarders. Uh, sure have. Hey. Oh, oh, Sam. Sheriff, what are you doing sitting there with that shotgun in your lap? And why are these poor men locked up like they were common criminals? Because when you tamper with the U.S. mail, that's exactly what you are, uh, a common criminal. Oh, Sheriff. <laughs> you know Uncle Joe and Sam. They don't mean any harm. Not according to Postmaster Hopper. They were rummaging around in all his mail, and when he told them to halt, they wouldn't do it. That right, Sam? Well, that's right, but he doesn't even want to know the reason we were doing it. That has nothing to do with the charge. The fact that you and you were doing it is what counts. What were you doing? Well, we were looking for a package from Betty Jo to you. We were positive she sent a present. We figured that's where it had to be. Did you hear that, Sheriff? Yeah, but why would you be expecting a present from Betty Jo? Well, it's my birthday. Your birthday? And Betty Jo didn't send you a present? Oh, I can't believe that. <laughs> well, we couldn't either, Sheriff. Why, I've known Betty Jo since she was uh, just a little tight. Uh, no higher than that. Well, she wouldn't pull a stunt like that. <laughs> She's thoughtful and considerate. Uh, you sure you don't have it at your substation? Uh, no, we looked everywhere. Then Halper has to have it. <laughs> Joe wouldn't send her mother a birthday present. Hey, Myrna, ring the post office for me, please. Halper, listen, uh, you're out of line on this Carson Drucker case. <laughs> of course I know what I'm talking about. Now, here's what I want you to do. Turn that post office upside down and find a package from Betty Jo Bradley addressed to her mother. 
No, I don't know how big it is. <laughs> is it bigger than a bread box? <laughs> she doesn't know. It's a birthday present. He says, happy birthday. <laughs> okay, now get on it and, uh... Uh-oh. Wait a minute. Oh, hey, look in here. <laughs> oh, Steve, what are you doing here? Well, we, we ran into Floyd and he told us everything. Forget it, Alper. Everything is just fine. <laughs> oh, you both look wonderful. But you know, I didn't expect you for at least another week. Oh, well, we wouldn't miss your birthday, Mom. But we sure tried. <laughs> Hello, <Little> Joe. <laughs> well, we wouldn't have made it tonight if we hadn't run into an old Air Force buddy of his in Chicago. An old Air Force buddy? Uh, we missed our plane. Well, how did that happen? Well, it's kind of a long story. <laughs> That's right. And the only thing that counts is, happy birthday, Mom. <laughs> this is your birthday present. I hope you like it. Oh, for <laughs> It's a momo. <laughs> I lost it so many times, he made me wear it home. <laughs> Mom? Mom? Here's a special present from all three of us. Thank you. 